Hello, welcome. This is Election Brief with me, Carlos Caloni. Within the next 30 minutes, we have the latest update from the political scene here in Ghana. We are live on DSTV Channel 421, Go TV Channel 125, all social media handles, and around the world on myjoyonline.com. Election Headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol, your clean fuel in full quantity. Chartered Institute of Management Accountants and the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants and German Ozone Medical Center, Alternative Therapy, Dental Wellness and Beauty. Election Headquarters for an Informed Electorate. Please stay for details. Grateful for your time. Let's take you straight to the Ashanti region, where all nine persons who have picked forms to contest the NPP primary for the Ejusso constituency by-election have filed their nominations. Four of the aspirants are women. Former president of the Ghana Football Association, Kwesi Nyantiche, who was last uh, but one to file a poll, a huge crowd on the day. My colleague Nana Yaojima wraps up activities ahead of the vetting shadow for Saturday. All nine individuals who picked nomination forms to contest the elections have completed the filing process. The four women aspirants made a bold statement by making an early appearance at the NPP office. Mame Ya Abwaje, who once contested the Ayawaso West Wogon primary, was first to submit her forms. It's, it's about experience, it's, a, it's about integrity, it's about who can do the job. So I don't believe in, you know, spending money and buying people all because you want to be an MP. Wife of Bono Regional Chairman of the NPP, Portia, a champion, Abronye, is prepared to make a statement in the election. I, I am capable, determined to listen to my people and to put them where they also want to be. Popularly known as Ejosu Broni, Abena Pukria Amwa Boaite is hoping to be lucky in her fifth attempt. So we need someone who is very strong, very viable, who knows the terrain, knows the people, what they want, so that we, we can you know, do the right things across board. Presiding member for Ejosu Municipal Assembly, Helena Mensa, was flanked by her assembly members as she takes another step in her quest to become MP. From delegate, assembly member, presiding member, three times assembly member, and two times presiding member, and now straight to the MP. <laughs> With a calm appearance, Dr. Evans Dia is gradually warming himself into the hearts of many. For the man who cannot see the ultimate, that person becomes a slave to the immediate. So they should look at the future, and vote for those that will be able to help. And when they are doing that, they should vote for Dr. Evans Dia. Aaron Prince Dia, who has served as party youth organizer for eight years, came in loud for the submission. They have not come here. They don't do anything here. When we are campaigning, you won't see them. When we are doing house, they won't come here. When you are doing voter, they won't come here. But once such opportunities come, because they have money, then you see them trooping in, coming for the position. And it is not helping the party. Second vice chairman of the Ejusu constituency, Kwabina Boatin, is challenging some aspirants to justify their roles in the development of the Ejusu constituency. There's an aspirant among us who went to his hometown, his so called hometown. They told him to bring a answer, a You know what that means? Uh, bring two documents to show that you have attended just two funerals in this town and we'll vote for you. Though the youngest among the aspirants, Kingsley Kakari Mensa, is not willing to take the last position. Former GFA president Kwesi Nyantechi showed numbers at the constituency office. I am very hopeful on account of uh, what I did in the past. I, what I did in the past for Ghana as a whole. 
and then the little contribution I made specifically to this constituency. You are all uh, living witnesses to <clears throat> the sterling uh, performances I put up. Even before the vetting is scheduled for Saturday, the aspirants have started their campaigns in earnest. For Joy News, Nana Ojima, Ejoso. Now from the Ashanti region, let's bring you to the Eastern region, where the aspiring member of parliament for the Ibuakwa South constituency in the Eastern region on the ticket of the new patriotic party, the NPP, Dr. Kinsley Ajiman, has described his main opponent in the 2024 general election as no match. Dr. Ajiman, who has been touting his personal contribution to the development of the constituency, also believes it will be a Herculean task for the National Democratic Congress, the NDC, to make inroads into the constituency, considering his track record and the history behind the seat. We'll tell you how his opponent, Nana Adoikins Jr., has been reacting to this. But first, here's Dr. Kinsley Ajiman. Kinsley is well defined by the constituents as education man. Right from uh, KG1 to P3, you have what we call the Kingsley Readathon. It's a reading series that is done annually. Mm. From P4 to P6, you have the Kingsley Spelling Challenge. JHS1 to JHS3, you have the Kingsley Math and Science Quiz. At the high school, you have the Kingsley Debate Series, Kingsley Mentorship Programs, and Kingsley uh, Football Gala Competition. Okay. So anywhere within the educational value chain, mm. we are well positioned. Okay. Kingsley is education within the constituency, and the constituency is education. The, the challenges of this constituency is not different from what we have in Ghana. So we have a five thematic areas that has been our area of focus right, right from Kingsley as an individual before Kingsley became a parliamentary candidate. Something we call the West Agenda. So on the issue of welfare, W stands for welfare. How do we build the welfare, show our people up to make them very competitive, traders on all the identifier groups. These are people that we have their data and we inter inter interact with them on a daily basis. Then we have education. I've enumerated to you the educational programs, the soft ones, the hard ones. We've built six unique classroom block at a Siakwa, another three unique classroom block at a Papem. So that is education. They have agriculture. Ask anybody in Chevy and its environs the price of maize. Through our community, our community farming projects, we ask a bag of 120 kilograms of bag of, of maize sells on the market at uh, between 800 and 1,000 Ghana. We are giving it to our people at 300 Ghana. Agriculture, which has found expression in the lives of the people. Because within 10 towns that we piloted this project, we found out that Kenke sellers were about 170, which means that the, the delicacy is well patronaged by our people. This is what we call the soil to stomach project under my agriculture, agriculture initiative. Then from agriculture, we come to social engagement. You find Kingsley everywhere. There's nowhere within the 110 polling stations, 24 electoral areas, that you will not find the blueprints of Kingsley engaging socially. Then the issue of health, the President H. Free medical screening, free public health uh, week celebrations, free health card registrations and stuff like that. So who in this reasonable mind will ever even contemplate as to whether Kingsley is well celebrated within the constituency, whether it's well known or not. I think it's, it, 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 it's a mere political gimmick. Fing figures don't lie, just the liars can't figure. I mean, from where they are as a political party within the constituency, it, it, it will take you ten turning yourself into another beam for that to happen. Yes, that will, ah, no way. JB Dankwe seat, Nanado Dankwe Kufuadu seat, Attaching a seat, and, and with all the, 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 the inroads that have made us an individual within the constituency, all my social investment here, he should come and tell us what he's done. He should come and tell us what he will do. We are not going to do we war. We are. And we'll be building on these uh, foundations that we have laid. There is no way my younger brother Akins, I mean, if not for political trying to deepen democracy, he knows very well. There are party people know. This is not the place they would have even filed a candidate. What will happen on 7 December will not be an election. 
to be an endorsement. Oh, okay. You are sure about that? Ah, but I, I had 95%. That's at your uh, party level. It will, it, will, it will find expression. So you are looking at what margin? Oh, it will be a pleasant surprise. However, his main opponent, Nana Adoekins Jr., sees the MPP's continuous grip of the constituency as an insult to the constituent, insisting successive MPs on the ticket of the NPP have little to show in terms of development. He insists that the NDC is a better alternative. There is a trend in Ghana now that anyone who wants to be a member of parliament or wants to hold in a political office will strategically a year or six months before start doing some charity works, giving out um, 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 books, um, doing health screening for people, uh, sharing food and all those things. And all of a sudden, the person posters appears and start canvassing for votes and all that. But Carlos, I mean, in my own small way, I have been doing a lot for my people. And I don't believe in this flaunting of, because that is not the reason why I do those things. I do those things out of my heart, out of the love I have for my people. If you go to Bon Ponce and Abyssin Yaboa, they don't have potable waters there. With my initiative, I was able to help them with mechanized bowl waters and all that. There are people that I help them pay their school fees when they are going to SHS. Every year, I support people. There are people who come with their health needs that I support them. Carlos, am I supposed to come and exhibit this openly to tell everybody that, oh, this is what Akins is doing for his people? No. I'm not interested in showing those things off. My focus now is the challenges that we are facing as the constituency. How do we fix them? And if you will be able to fix them, you need capacity. What is that capacity? As a member of parliament, you'll be the number one lobbyist for your constituency. You have the capacity to go in and out to make sure that these basic needs of your people are being settled. My predecessors, I mean, they, they, they've, they've tried their own, they've tried to do their own things and all that. But I, what I would say is that their focus had always been more on their political parties, agendas and all that. I, I have never seen my MP on his feet in parliament advocating anything for a us out before. I have never. I need to be proved wrong. And this is a point where I'm going to plead with the good people of a us out to look beyond party colors. Because these MPP people are faking the good people of a us out for granted. And it's been quite too long. And this 2024 elections, to let them know that a Bokwa South is not a constituency that you can just walk over anymore. You know, they have this saying and this mindset, the MPP, that oh, was for Bokwa South, if you should even bring a goat and you tie around his neck um, the flag of MPP, he is going to win. That is an insult to the people of Bokwa South. And we have to punish them for that. This is the time that we need to make a positive change in our constituency. Carlos, you know, any time that the MPP realizes that the people of Boko South is about to change their minds about them with the bad kind of leadership uh, that they are, they are, they are, um, they are given, they change their candidate. How can one person be a member of parliament for 16 years, for 12 years, they cannot tell or show what they have done? And all of a sudden they will tell you, oh, now we've brought someone else. And that is also going to be the same issue. MPP has been in charge of a Boa Kwasa since 1996. And these MPs, if you should line them up here and ask them what have they done for the people of a Boa Kwasa, Carlos, I bet you there will be nothing for them to talk about. You're still watching Election Brief here on your Joy News channel. We'll take a short break. We'll return with more. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, independent uh, presidential candidate Alan Kojo Chermanton has announced a strategic partnership with the National Interest Movement led by former Convention People's Party, the CPP's flag bearer, Dr. Foster Abu Sakara, ahead of the 2024 elections. Now, this collaboration uh, operating under the banner Alliance for Revolutionary Change, ARC, was unveiled through a statement released on Thursday, April 4, 2024. Uh, in the statement, uh, Mr. Chermantin outlined the objectives of the alliance, which is slated for official launch on Wednesday, April 17th. Now, 
According to sources close to the alliance, the primary goal of the ARC is to rally Ghanaians from diverse backgrounds with a particular emphasis on engaging the youth and women in order to elect the first independent candidate as president of Ghana. And so that is the focus of the alliance. But let's bring in a political science uh, analyst for a broader conversation on this matter. And I've been joined by Dr. Asa Asante. He's a political scientist, lecturer at the University of Ghana. He joins us via Zoom. Uh, hello, Doc. Great having you here. Uh, you are one person. You've monitored the space for some time. Uh, what difference can this new alliance bring to the political landscape here in Ghana? Yeah, good afternoon, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, alliances are always important in politics uh, because uh, uh, they bring in uh, like-minded minds and uh, they forge ahead uh, to support the efforts of the country towards, you know, uplifting uh, the, the standard of living and improving their lot. Uh, on that score, you realize that uh, alliance are always important when you have the right people in it and they have the right vision and they have the right programs and they are able to articulate their views clearly to their voters. So, uh, what do they need to do in this particular case? Uh, we're talking about the, the new alliance. Uh, what do they need to, to do differently to ensure they really become the third force Ghanaians have been calling for? Uh, let me uh, touch on the fact that when we talk about third force, mm. Ghanaians are getting a wrong uh, view about a third force. Okay. Yes, a third force, my understanding is that you want uh, another party outside the realms of NDC and MPP, that are the two dominant parties. Mm. Uh, from the word go, that is from 1951, when the first election was held mm. up to today, uh, our political tradition has been along uh, a two-party system where you may have two or uh, more than two parties in the state, but only two have what it takes to win election and form a government exclusive to themselves. All right. All right. Yeah, where you want to have a third force is a function of two things, an electoral system uh, and... Uh, the, 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 the party systems. Mm. If you look at the two-party system, uh, obviously it will not produce a third force. Any party uh, within the enclaves of, uh, or the area of jurisdiction of two dominant parties will obviously be dwarfed. Mm. That is uh, the, the, the start reality. The other is what? The electoral system that you will have, uh, the first past the post system, mm. that one vote can push somebody to become what a leader and the other one not, all right? Yeah. So once you have that and you don't have proportional representation, I'm afraid you are not going to have what? A third force. Party will win election landslide yeah. or, you know, they will, they will go for a second round and the tie will be broken and definitely there will be a winner. But if you look at where third force have been strong yeah. and have featured prominently, it's where they form coalition government because they are not able to form a government exclusive to themselves. So mm. back to Alan's issue. Mm. Uh, winning the election as what? Let me put it in quote, third force. It mm. won't happen. They will not get that. They will not win. That really? is a fact. They know that. Mm. I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm speaking as a political scientist. Mm. But what they can do is that cause it a stay within the political landscape to push the election to a second round. Mm. That is a possibility. Uh, because if you look at uh, research that we have done uh, from 1992 up to 2020, Right. And when I say we have done, it's, uh, I have a team that I'm the leader. We've done a lot of work. You realize that the, all those smaller political parties, their effort put together have not gone beyond an average of what? Five percent. They have, you know, hoovered around four and uh, beyond four percent, but not even five percent. Mm. But let us remember that when you look at the constitution, the threshold is 50 beyond 50 percent. So for you to win, you need a lot. Mm. So where are they going to get their the support from All to right. win? Okay. I, that is not to say that uh, I, I discredit the, 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 the status and all that. They are giants. Uh, Abu Sakara is a giant. Mm. Abu Sakara knows the issues. 
Uh, he's been on the ground for years and he's able to articulate his views clearly and he has a sense of what is happening in this country and he has solutions. He's All a right. man of ideas. All right. And so can be said about Alan Jeremating, mm. a very credible person, mm. a man who has served his country through and through. And then he is what worth uh, the material worth considering for this type of venture. All right. But all that I'm saying is that when you look at them, the best they can do is mm. to push, be able, if they're able to what govern and support, mm. and then urge other smaller parties to also put in a great fight, then they are likely to uh, or push the election to a second round. All right. That all is right. if their performance becomes meaningful. All right. Then they become what, uh, uh, come, uh, you know, key makers, then people will come to them, they bag it again, and then uh, they decide on who becomes the next the, president. The, 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 the uh, that is the, the best that they can achieve. All right, Doc, so thank you so, so, so much. We are grateful for your time, for the deep insight there. Now, we've uh, been joined by the Deputy Director of the Communication of the Movement for Change in a person of courage in Nobe. Uh, he is in studio. Uh, you're welcome to uh, uh, join us. I want thank to you. find out what really informed this uh, alliance in the first place. Okay, thank you very much. If you remember in September 2023, when the movement for change was launched by the Honorable Alan Tremartin, mm. uh, he indicated that what he's doing, he's a man on an agenda. Mm -hmm. But it's not a lone agenda, it's an agenda that many Ghanaians identify with. Mm. Uh, for any serious movement that is seeking to append the status quo, you would have to uh, join forces with other uh, political entities. Mm -hmm. And so it is in the line of that that we've had several engagements leading to this very important alliance uh, together particularly with the National Interest Movement led by Dr. Abu Sakara mm. and other entities that we will name on the 17th of this month when we so outdoor the alliance. But this alliance is underpinned by the common interest we all share, mm. that the duopoly has not been profitable for this country. Mm. For the past 32 years, we keep wallowing in poverty. In fact, we are pushing more people into extreme poverty. And what that has done is created a bulk of young people who are in despair. Mm. When you have that, you are not safe as a country. And that is why you need a revolution. But this time around, a non-violent revolution. So what the Movement for Change mm. has done is to create an avenue where a lot of people who are concerned about this country mm. can express you know, their, their view and contribute to changing the status quo. Okay. And that is why this partnership is very, very important. They all identify with the issues mm. that one, we need to change from the duopoly which has underpinned and entrenched a winner takes all mm. and a divisive politics. Mm. They, we also agree that we need a national development plan. But for that national development plan to happen, mm. you need to have a leader who has the, the outlook okay. where others can trust mm. to be able to form an important document that can guide the development of this country. Then when you have done that, you need to be able to do the necessary constitutional reforms that will tune the constitution from politics mm. to development. All right. And all these we agree on. And it is to this extent that we've been able to secure this alliance to ensure that we are able to uh, bolster uh, our forces mm. to gain the mandate from the two parties that okay. have dominated. So, so we are likely to see other political actors joining your movement? A, a lot of other political entities okay. uh, that have been very uh, active in the Ghanaian political space. So you, you see a lot more beyond the national interest mm. movement. Okay, so share with us, uh, I mean, data we've come across uh, clearly shows that third forces have really not been effective. You just heard Dr. Sasanti uh, there. What are you gonna do differently from what we've seen from PNC, from CPP, from PPP this time around. All right, thank you very much. I think within the limits of historical data, mm. uh, Prof. Azazate is right to make that conclusion. Mm. But one thing that many analysts are losing sight of mm. is the context mm. of the times. These times call for change. There's an overwhelming hunger in the people of Ghana mm. for a change from these two parties, both of whom have had about 16 years apiece and not been able to deliver the prosperity that they want. Mm. And because of that, the, the dynamics in this particular election are different. For example, you have a former president who wants to be president again. Whatever he's got to be able to show, we've seen already. And the verdict on him was that it is unsatisfactory. Mm. As a people, we deserve better. You have a sitting vice president who made all the flowery promises, and he's failed to deliver on that, whether it is interest rates, whether it is on fuel prices, whether it is on roads, 
every sector, look at it, is failed to deliver on that, particularly on the economy. Mm. And he's also from, uh, for the first time, and this is a statement of fact, we have a Muslim who, for the first time, is gunning to be president. It's not happening in the Fourth Republic. Then you have an independent candidate, a colossal figure, who is known for nothing other than competence and integrity. Who was also part of that same government. Absolutely, mm. but prove his worth. To the extent that even in the State of the Nation's address, the only jobs, meaningful jobs the president could boast about were jobs that this particular appointee created, about 170,000 jobs through industrialization. And he has put himself forward to say that, you know what, the direction is not the best. Mm. And so I have the credibility, I have the competence, I have that Christ-like attribute that is needed to transform a society. Mm. And so come with me. And we are seeing significantly other political entities have confidence in him, mm. believe in his agenda, and join forces with him. Clearly, we are not up for a regular election in 2024. And so I understand it from the historical data analysis, mm. but present data, present uh, tracking of the polls indicates that, that we are already being given within five months, seven to 10%. Okay. I don't think we've seen that in the, in, in, in the previous elections. Okay. And so the young people of this country mm. are ready and willing to work for change. And that is what you are seeing with the many masses of people who join forces with the movement everywhere we go uh, on our campaign. All right, briefly, 30 seconds. So um, are you looking at winning the 2024 elections or you are positioning yourself to become a third force? Briefly. The desire of many Ghanaians mm. is to change the status quo this 2024. Your objective. And our objective is in tandem with that desire. In fact, it is for that desire in response to that desire that Alan Tramatin put himself up. And we've all garnered our uh, support for him. So we are winning this election in December 7th when the time comes. We are grateful to you. Uh, Thank Mr. you very Dabi. much for the opportunity. Grateful. It's always a pleasure to be here. And so this has been your election brief uh, from your election headquarters here in Accra. My name is Carlos Caloni. We have a lot more political stories on our website, myjoyonline.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good afternoon.